What's going on, everyone? Welcome to today's pandemic update for Tuesday, May 9th, 2023. Hopefully everyone is staying safe and testing negative since we have last seen each other. Today, India has 1,331 new COVID cases and 11 deaths in the last 24 hours. India is continuing to see their cases decline, and that is some good news. Hopefully it stays that way. We are watching XBB 2.3, which originated in India. We're watching to see if that causes a second wave of COVID. There was another article I looked at earlier, and the headline for the article says, COVID is quickly waning in India. So here we are with the nonsense saying, ooh, it's quickly ending again. How many times have we seen that same old song and story over and over again? to only be fooled by yet another COVID wave. Moving on to our next story of the day. Dire and near catastrophic. Doctor urges patients to avoid Langley Memorial Hospital. This is up in Canada. Apparently, this hospital is just so overwhelmed with uh, patients, they're asking people to avoid it. So read what this says here. Let's see here. I would like to urge you to advise your patients to, if at all possible, Bypass Langley Memorial for any acute, urgent medical needs effective immediately, he wrote, saying, we'd never seen emergency doctors so overwhelmed with patients. But remember, cold and quote, the pandemic's over. Well, it's certainly not over for hospitals because hospitals are still overwhelmed, such as this one here in Canada. All right, moving on to our next story. This is something that we missed last week. I believe it happened back on May 4th. Yes. And uh, this is rather interesting. Another quote. Wasn't the pandemic supposed to be over? Northampton County High in North Carolina. Dismissing early due to high number of COVID-19 cases. Let's read on. Northampton County High School in North Carolina had to dismiss early last Thursday due to a high number of COVID cases. The district issued a social media post at 10.30 a.m. that day, Thursday saying the high school would be dismissing at noon in order to give the school a thorough cleaning and sanitation. Huh, I love it when they say that. It's an airborne virus. It spreads from the mouth, the nose, eye contact, and yes, sanitation too, but number one, most importantly, this is an airborne virus. That's great you want to give the school a good sanitation and thorough cleaning. Maybe clean up some of the other viruses that could be going around. But... You need proper ventilation and air purifiers in your schools in order to stop all the cases. Moving on to our next story that we found. COVID-19 virus has been detected in free-ranging California wildlife for the first time. As you see here, a picture of a deer. SARS-CoV-2, the virus responsible for COVID-19, has been discovered for the first time in free-ranging California wildlife. The virus was detected in a hunter harvest mule deer in El Dorado County. The deer, which did not display any signs of illness, was sampled by California Department of Fish and Wildlife, CDFW, for chronic wasting disease, CWD surveillance, and tested negative for chronic wasting disease. Why SARS-CoV-2 has previously been confirmed in pets and zoo animals in California, this marks the first time it has been found in free-ranging wildlife. And I believe in the past, Canada has had cases of uh, coronavirus in deer. And I know Pennsylvania has been, uh, Penn State University has been studying this happening. I believe there's been a few deer in Pennsylvania that have had this happen. So while not uncommon, it's the first time it has happened in California. So something to keep an eye on. All right, moving on to this. This is now in Hong Kong. Hong Kong sees almost double fatal and severe COVID-19 cases in a week. Again, almost double the number of fatal cases and severe cases in a week. Remember, pandemic's supposed to be cold and quote over. The World Health Organization said it's no longer emergency. Yet we just saw a hospital that's overwhelmed, a school that had to be dismissed because of outbreaks, and now Hong Kong says... Things are getting really bad. So this pandemic is clearly not over. And let's read what it says here. The number of fatal and severe COVID-19 cases in Hong Kong saw a significant increase last week, nearly double 
the amount of the previous week, according to health authorities. Despite the rise, experts emphasize that the death rate remains small and compared to potentially daily infections. So in other words, despite the rise and everything, we still have to minimize so everything can quote-unquote behave normally. That's basically what they're trying to say. All right, moving on to our next story. This has to do with Novavax, and this is more of a, um, not so much an update on the vaccine itself, more of an update on the company. COVID-19 vaccine maker Novavax to chop workforce expenses. And it says here, Novavax is cutting about a quarter of its global workforce as the COVID-19 vaccine maker seeks to slash expenses while dealing with uncertain future revenue. The company said Tuesday that it expects to trim next year's costs for research and development, as well as selling general and administrative expenses by about 40% to 50% compared to 2022. And Novavax employees, 1,992 full-time employees, that's quite a few, a Novavax representative said the cuts will be affect about 20% of that workforce or nearly about 400 people. So basically they want to distribute their money more evenly. All I know is if the government would ever wake up and find out what a great vaccine Novavax is, I mean they probably already know it, they want to give the money to Moderna and Pfizer instead. But we just saw recent data that says Novavax is 100%, almost 100% against hospitalizations. That's pretty uh, effective. Now, we don't know about XVB 116 or 2.3, but if more people would wake up to that, uh, they need to hire more people because people would be flocking to get their vaccine. All right, we announced earlier today in a previous video, the Walgreens COVID positivity tracker is back. It's going to update weekly on Mondays. And in case you're wondering, the national positivity is 24.8%. That is 5.4% from whenever they updated previously. They may have updated last week. We didn't see it. And previously it was 19.4%, 7,747 tests conducted versus 10,588 tests. All right, this day in COVID history, back on May 9th of 2020, the unemployment rate in the U.S. was at 14.7%, the highest since the Great Depression, with 20.5 million people out of work. The hospitality, leisure, and healthcare industries take the greatest hits overall, affecting essential workers, people with lower incomes, and racial and ethnic minority workers disproportionately. And if you recall at that time, we mentioned this recently on a This Day in COVID pandemic history, uh, that was the time the food lines were just really long. You saw all these drive through pop-up sites to get food. Yeah, it, it was pretty bad at the start of this pandemic. Taking a look at wastewater, all regions are either flat or dropping, especially the West Coast region, where it's dropping the most. Taking a look at the CDC map here, there is something I want to bring your attention to today on the uh, wastewater map. And look what it says here. 132 new sites. Percentage of sites that make up new sites is 11, and that's a 2% increase. So in other words, more sites continue to come on the map. And this is fantastic news. I'm seeing a couple of white dots in Pennsylvania where there's going to be some new sites. It's just a matter of getting these sites online. Like, for example, here in southeast Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia County, there's a major issue with getting the system online. It was online briefly. Then they ran into an issue. See, Philadelphia has to send its samples out to Michigan to be sampled. Yeah, it's silly. All right, moving on to our next thing. The CDC transmission map. Uh, Thursday will be our last update for that because the pandemic emergency ends. If it does update Thursday at all, 557 counties are at high. 354 are substantial. 1,437 are at moderate. 775 are in low transmission. Latest variants. XBB15 is 66.9%. XBB116 is 12.5%. XBB191 is 9.4%. XBB192 is 3.7%. XBB23 is 2.7%. XBB151 is 2.4%. And FD.2 is 1.6%. 
new variant proportion update video is coming on Friday. Hit that subscribe button down below and set it for the notification bell so you will be notified of the next time I do that video if you're new to my channel. Alrighty, moving on to New Jersey. 173 new cases in New Jersey, 77 probable cases, one lab confirmed death. Hospital situation in New Jersey is as follows. 174 hospitalizations, 8 people on a ventilator, 22 people in the ICU. Taking a look at hospitalizations situation in Philadelphia, well, the EMS situation, and it continues to be bad. We saw multiple days over 800. Yesterday was not much better. 792 EMS incidents. So it's been at or near 800 since last week. And I can tell you something. I was listening to some of the uh, Northern Band, which is centrally central Philadelphia on North earlier today. And it was nonstop. So I got a feeling tomorrow is going to be really high as well. Will it be as high? I don't know. Maybe it'll be higher. I mean, there were a lot of incidents. So it's not good. Something is clearly going wrong, whether it's post-COVID Active COVID going up. We can't see wastewater in the city, so I can't tell you if it's COVID or not. But in the burbs, the burbs have been really busy as well. All right, central Pennsylvania, Mount Nittany Medical Center, the only hospital in Center County, Pennsylvania. Hospitalizations dropped by one today to five. We don't get terribly concerned until they hit about 20 there. That's when I personally start getting concerned. Sometimes even over 15 for a sustained period of time. That concerns me as well. All right, New York State. 367 people tested positive in the last 24 hours, not including reinfections or at-home tests. 1.8% positivity rate. The seven-day average is 1.9%. Taking a look at New York State hospitalizations, and they have 593 people in the hospital, which is flat, so it didn't rise today. That could signal we see a drop tomorrow and the next day after. Usually, whatever happens on Tuesday is a good indicator sometimes wednesday as well sometimes wednesday is the day that it goes upward we'll see so 593 people in the hospital 66 people in the icu and real quickly i did want to take a look at new york city today and new york city yesterday had 192 today 198 so new york city did go up by six again new york state as a whole it's like a fishing line if you have a weight on your fishing line and you're in a boat and you're floating and you cast it and you hit the bottom it bounces off the bottom that's what's happening with the new york state cases right now eventually it will go up or it could go down further we just have to wait and see xbb 116 would uh, eventually cause it to go up uh, texas has not updated today so we'll skip over that we will get a new update out of texas tomorrow and here we go with some international reports, just real briefly. South Korea, cases up 17%, deaths down 22%. Japan, cases are now up 4%, deaths are down 26%. France, cases down 23%, deaths down 4%. Russia, cases down 34%, deaths down 5%. Indonesia, cases up 17%, and deaths up 53%. Vietnam, cases are up 10 or down 10%. Deaths are up 50%. They now have uh, six deaths in the last seven days. Philippines, 86% increase in cases. 900% increase in deaths. That's because it's nine versus zero still. And Germany is starting to see a rise in cases. 31% increase in Germany. And deaths there are up 5%. Malaysia is seeing an increase in cases by 53%. And deaths are down 11%. And we'll end today on Hong Kong. Remember, we said Hong Kong severe cases and deaths are going up. 20% increase in cases and deaths are up 86% with 54 in the last seven days compared to 29. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. I need you to do a couple things before I see you next time. Number one, stay safe. Number two, test negative. Number three, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. And number four, if you're new to my channel, subscribe down below. Trust me. It's worth it. It'll help keep you safe from the coronavirus pandemic and any other virus that's going on out there. We talk about them just about every day. Alrighty, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time. But until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone.